Hello, and <laughs> welcome to another edition of After the Whistle. We are back September 1st. It's summer's pretty much over. It's hoodie season. It's a lot of things, and, you know, we're back We're back after a week off. Had to take a little break. So we, we're here, and there's a lot going on in the sports world. Yeah, man, yeah. definitely. I had to catch a tan <laughs> and train these kids outside and indoors, you know, need some work. Holla at me. Yeah, indeed, <laughs> man. So before we get all the all the craziness that, well, not craziness, but, you know, the, the what happened yesterday, but uh, I was watching, I finally watched The Untold, Malice in the Palace. Oh, you finally watched it? I finally, finally all watched right. it, finally yeah. watched it, and I came out with that thing. The players were not wrong at all. They shouldn't, they sh- they should not have gotten those crazy suspensions. Ron Artest should have never been suspended for the whole year. Steven Jackson should have never got 30 games. They reduced Jermaine O'Neal's suspension, which was the right thing to do. But none of those players did anything did anything wrong in that whole thing. It was all escalated. Everything that happened was escalated by the fans. It was escalated by the cup. That too. The infamous cup. Yeah. Cup toss. <laughs> He was on the money too. Like mm-hmm. honestly, I agree. Like I definitely disagree with the whole Ron Artest full season suspension. Yeah. Yeah. You want to suspend a man for going up the stands and unfortunately harming other people just by him running up there? I get it. But him to lose that much money for a full season is unacceptable. Those guys should have definitely, you know what I mean? They definitely got what they deserved. Yeah. The physical punishment. Yeah. And you know what I mean? The repercussions from the court system. So, and the guy talking about it was a cheap shot. Like, bro, like, once you step on the NBA court, you, you, it's no different than people running on the football and the soccer field. Once you get out there, you should expect the worst to happen to you. Because yeah. who are you to step out there? You get paid. It's no different than you going to the zoo. You're not going to step in the lines then or with the Tigers or the Gorillas because you expect something dangerous to happen. But because you're on the basketball court, it's A OK? Nah. The dude was like probably five 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 three, and he's talking about a Jermaine O'Neal sucker punched him, six feet ten. Like if if he actually did square up with Jermaine yeah. O'Neal, like hey, what do you think was gonna happen? And if you watch the whole thing, you see all right, Ron Artest when he went in the faint, when he went in the stands, he did what he had to do, but he really didn't. He he could have done worse to the person. He kind of just like mushed the person's face, and then. He got back when he got back on the court. He's calming down. Everything. Everybody's trying to get calm of the situation. Then this dude is walking on the court. Then he steps to him. So what do you think is gonna happen when everything was calming down? He's get trying to get back. You know they they're trying to get out of there. But he comes on the court, squares up and wants to fight him. And then things go and things just get worse from there. And. These people have to realize when you're an opposing team coming into another arena, it's your team versus everybody. Yeah. It's not just you versus the opposing team. It's you versus every fan voting, rooting against you. Yeah. That man had a Pistons jersey on. What did you expect? I'm expecting something negative to happen if you got a Pistons jersey while all this is going on. I'm thinking right. riding for his team like some yeah. of these diehards do. So he deserved what happened. Yeah. And like, like I said, for some reason, why is basketball the only sport that like has certain repercussions that other sports don't have? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just certain things that these people don't do to these other athletes in other sports. But in basketball, it's just a, it's allowed to happen until it gets out of hand. Yeah. How about they just stop things before it gets out of hand? And that got out of hand. And also, it was more so people. A lot of media outlets were trying to blame the players on it. The, there was all the negative comments was towards the players. There was probably a few handful, only a handful of certain guys in the media that actually blamed the players for their behavior because the players legit just escalated. That not the players, the fans escalated everything, and it was just like, why are you blaming the players for doing that? The players were were pretty much defending themselves, and and they said it too, like. If the fans left it alone, it just would have been a regular little shoving match like it always is because they're all friends. They all know each other, which they said in the documentary. Mm -hmm. And once again, these people paid to watch them do a service. Enjoy the service. You know what I mean? For one, these athletes aren't around for a lifetime. They're only around for a short amount of time compared to a lifetime. So enjoy them while they're here. And you paid all this money for what? To cause havoc? For real. If you also watch that clip when 
when he went in the stands and then Steven Jackson went in the center, went in the stands to help his teammate. Fred Jones was like getting pummeled by somebody. Like Fred Jones went in the stand too, and he was he's back there getting pummeled by somebody, and it was just like, yo, where? And then you Who's got innocent for? bystanders. Yeah. You know what I mean? Falling over each other, getting ran over and trampled over. It was just unnecessary. Was very unnecessary. Then the 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 thing I didn't the thing they never highlighted when they was when this was when this happened, they were, they didn't talk about fan, the fans throwing chairs when they were trying to leave. That, that fly. Man, this fly. <laughs> yeah, this fly is all over the place. You wanna be part of the show. They ain't talk about the fans throwing the chairs. The fans throwing the beer and popcorn at, at the players as they're walking out. Like, and that's at that point, you do that to anybody else in public. Like that's this, like battery, isn't it? Yeah, isn't that's, like a, that's battery. Form of, a yeah. form of battery. Like they all should have been highlighted. Yeah. So I'm glad that documentary came out, but it was, yeah, when it happened, the repercussion. They there should have been more repercussions for towards the fans than the players because you know Stephen Jackson said that those guys lost a lot, whole lot of money for defending themselves and their teammates. And it was like the fans, the, the people just talking about, oh, that's just fans being fans. No. And you have to be a whole like a whole different type of coward to be 15 rows up to pull bear, pull bear or, or coke right? on somebody as they're leaving. Yeah. Like, I can't, I can't stand people like that. Yeah. If you haven't watched that untold documentary on the Malice in the Palace, you should check it out. It's on Netflix. If you got Netflix, check it out. It's really good. It gets the player's perspective because... Too many times they were just, yeah, it was bad. And also, I didn't like when they interviewed the fan that threw it. He was like, he was like, he, he's sitting there laughing like it wasn't a big deal what he just did. And he's just like, yo, you just cost these guys, you just cost one guy a whole season, you just cost another guy 30 games and a whole lot of money. And you're sitting there like acting like this is a joke. But those are the people that say, like, oh, those guys shouldn't be getting paid that much to play a game. Right. So, you know, that's the undercover hate. And then, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so check that out. Well, that goes for block for the A block. Uh something, something important happened yesterday. Well, yeah. There's a new era in football for the New England Patriots with the quarterback situation. So shocking to everybody through all the sports world, the Patriots cut Cam Newton. There was there's plenty of reasons probably why they cut Cam Newton, but this one, this definitely came to a shock. But yeah, I I I was just I I was speechless. I was like, oh, I didn't think it was gonna happen. But and you know, low key, I had a feeling. I was saying to myself, imagine if they would cut this dude. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think anybody expected him to get cut before the first you know snap of the official season. Yeah, I thought they would have let him you know compete for the starting job mm -hmm. half the way through the season, like they should have. Like, but um. You know what they say about football and basketball and other sports? Like, football is one of those sports you have to pick guys that fit your system. Yeah. In basketball, you, you can adjust your system for your players. Mm -hmm. And Belichick, I feel like he, he's a good, but I'm not sure if he's as great as we might have thought he is just because, like, you should have been able to work with Cam compared to, like, a lot of analysts, analysts are saying that this guy Jones is similar to Brady, which we know that he sits in the pocket and mm, they yeah. could build around him just similar – Similar like they did Brady, but yeah. they got to realize he's not Brady. His IQ is not Brady, so hopefully he's decent enough. Yeah. But I just don't. I don't. I don't like how they just cut Cam like that. Personally. Yeah. The, the thing with this whole Cam Newton thing was like it was it was a it was a bad it wasn't even a bad mix. It was just he was pretty much not accepted by New England. By New England nation and like Patriots nation, he wasn't really like people say they expected they accepted him and stuff, but no. And the situation of him coming in, like last year, first off, I blame the Panthers too because the Panthers when they released him, they did him dirty because they released him like the tail end of preseason. So it's like all, everybody has people have all the players have all the guys that they want signed. So you just released him at the tail end. So now he's got to wait months to get a call. Then he gets here, and it was late late in camp, so. It was just he was playing catch up all the time, and you got to look at the COVID too. COVID played a role. He co had COVID last year, and missed the game, and then he had to be put. He had to miss a few days because he didn't have it. But I think he was in contact with somebody that may have have it, and I think that also played a big role in it because you going into the season, if you even you're in close contact with anybody, you're gonna have to go on a protocol. And imagine if he goes in. He's in contact. He was in close contact with somebody that had it. Then he was in quarterbacks room, and all the quarterbacks might have a situation like Denver last year, when all their quarterbacks 
had to be put on the COVID list because one of them had a contact. So I'm sure that's that was probably a big reason that, that he got released because it's like I don't know if we're gonna have him. Don't don't want him on because he might if he gets close contact and all our quarterbacks are gone. What's gonna happen? And when you're starting with a whole new quarterback, you're basically rebuilding for the most part. Yeah. So I don't think they want to take the time to rebuild with Cam since he's older. Yeah. So many injuries. You don't know how long he's going to yeah. last. So just figured they just, you know, have a fresh start with Jones, which, yeah. you know, isn't the worst Isn't mm-hmm. the worst thing because they're used to ha- – I mean, Belichick's used to having a quarterback that's not as physically gifted and talented as the yeah. rest, and he knows how to get the best out of them. So we'll see what he does with it. Yeah, him. I just I – just, <laughs> So I have a lot of I have a lot of conflicting issues with this whole camp thing because everybody keeps telling me that Mac Jones outplayed Cam in the preseason and all that, but I'm just like, and I'm looking at some of these preseason stats. Look, all right, Cam against the Giants, he only threw the ball five times, played like two series, and then Mac Jones, I think he played like a whole quarter or something, you know, ten for four, ten for fourteen hundred fifty six yards, one touchdown, right? That that was the last preseason game against the Giants, and then the first preseason game. I think Cam played two series as well. Cam, yeah, Cam played, threw the ball seven times. Mac Jones threw the ball 19 times. And Cam got like two series in. Mac Jones got a long, longest stint. And then there was another one, that their second preseason game, uh, I believe, who was it against? Against the Eagles, looking all this up right now. Cam, nine attempts. He, you know, he was eight for nine. Mac Jones, 19 attempts. Cause it, so it's like if this was really a quarterback competition, I, I, I wouldn't tell by the way – the the that you guys are having Cam attempt to throw the ball because he's not getting these he's not getting the attempts and then he's playing like one or two series. I mean, now that you you know you laid it out like that, since I didn't I don't really watch preseason. Yeah, yeah. Just every time I catch it, it's like second half. Yeah, for and then, yeah. So, um, it looks like they were just throwing him out just to say we was given an opportunity, but yeah. really was getting Jones ready. What's yeah. his name? Is it Michael Mack? Mac? Mac. Mac, yeah, uh, yeah. Look, look like, looks like they were just getting Mac Jones warmed up for the regular season. Yeah, when you lay it out like that. So. Yeah, because it's like if it was really a comp- if it was really a quarterback competition, then it would have, you know, you would have had the same amount. And then I, the thing I also didn't like is during the training camps, Cam they high Cam's bad throws and miscues were highlighted way more than. Mac Jones, like anytime Cam had a bad throw, under threw a under threw a receiver, over threw a receiver, somebody will post it or they'll they'll put that out there. They never put out when Mac Jones did the same thing. They only put out when Mac Jones had these great practices, was accurate with the ball. Also, also, you know, when Cam was out for those three days, they they were talking about how Mac Jones did with the first team offense against the Giants' first team defense, and then when Cam came back. Cam also, when he played against the first team Giants offense, uh, defense, I should say, he did pretty he did pretty well. He was getting the ball to receive, but that wasn't really highlighted much. That wasn't talked about much. It was just like more so, yeah, yeah, whatever. But Mac Jones, any anytime he does something good, it gets more magnified. But whenever Cam, he was he didn't do any when he did something bad, it was just more so, oh uh, yeah, you see this, he's not the guy and stuff like that. It was just like I, <laughs> Man, it seemed like they might have been setting them up for failure, but you know it goes kind of like that older brother, little brother syndrome, or yeah. older sibling. Yeah, little sibling. You know, little yeah. sibling can't do it, can't do any wrong. Yeah, or a lot of wrong he does gets looked past compared to the older older sibling who's yeah. more mature and knows better. And, yeah, you know, has to be the example. So you know, I think it can't. They probably think can't be in the league long enough. He shouldn't be doing some of the things he's doing, and you know, they they critique him. But, Way more than you critique somebody that hasn't been around at all. So, yeah, you know, and you, just... and also everybody also forgets when he got to New England last year, he had missed two, the past two seasons. Like the pretty much the, he missed the majority of the past two seasons. So shoulder injury, foot injury, especially the shoulder injury. So it was, it was more so when he came here, people were expecting him to just pick up where Brady kind of left off or something like that, or try See. to. You said okay. people forget that he missed two seasons. No, they didn't care. That's, they didn't care. Yeah, that, that that too. So yeah, so I'm, I yeah, I'm, I, as you can see, if you can't tell, I'm a big Camp Newton fan, so you won't catch me saying nothing bad about him. But like the over, he's well, he's gonna go down as probably one of the more, the most over scrutinized, underappreciated quarterback in the history of the NFL. Because if you look at some of the teams that he's been on. 
and the receivers that he's had throughout his career, you know who his two best receivers were? Steve Smith Sr. when he was, and this was Steve Smith, the tail end of his career, and Ted Ginn Jr. Went to a Super Bowl with Ted Ginn Jr. as his number one receiver. That's it. <laughs> and, you know, and this guy gets overly scrutinized even from, even you look at the guys he played with in Auburn on offense, the receiver, you're like, <laughs> you're like, man. So that's that's the thing. I'm that's what I'm gonna remember most about Cam Newton because I don't know if he'll get another opportunity because you know how the NFL goes, especially you know injury issues and stuff like that. So I don't know if he'll get another opportunity. So if he doesn't, but that's how I'm gonna see him go down because he's gonna be the most overly scrutinized, underappreciated quarterback in history because he gets it from everybody. I mean, some of these other quarterbacks getting opportunities and starting jobs. I'm sure he'll get one. Yeah. Well, the Mac Jones era has begun. It will begin on next Sunday. It's going to be Alabama on Alabama Crime Tour, Mac, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's going to that's gonna be it. This, is a, this dude's getting a lot of hype. People are giving this dude a lot of hype. Me, I'm just like, I don't really give a quarterback's hype. I, I wait a couple years to see how they, the full body of work, but – the way they're talking about Mac Jones, it's just like this guy's going to be the franchise-changing quarterback. And I only said two things. It was easy throwing the guys in college that were just booty, butt naked open, or you could just give them the ball and they'll make more move and go. Now you actually have to – we're going to see how, you gonna, how good you are with – not all these All Americans and first round draft picks surrounding you because it's. He's gonna it's, find out and see. We're, we're, we're gonna see. But two things I'm, I'm worried about offensive line and Josh McDaniels. Those two reasons might not help him out. Well, I know he's not, you know, a dual threat, but yeah. I hope you got, you know, a little speed. Yeah, a, a little bit. Yeah, the, the good thing for him is that the Patriots have a good running game. That's the that's yeah, the good do. thing. They do. Yeah, because they do. they're gonna they're gonna be a pound, uh, pound and ground team this year. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of the running game because I just don't see how they're gonna have them throw the ball thirty times this year. But who knows? Yeah, who knows? But the play calling needs to be good because Josh McDaniels play calling the past four years, like you know Brady saved him his last Brady's last two years. He kind of <laughs> saved all the terrible calls that he was doing. We saw how bad he was last year. The quarterback took all the took all the brute of the <laughs> criticism, but he's been bad for a couple of years, and it's just like people are turning a blind eye to him. People forget the quarterback don't call the plays. I mean, he calls the plays, but he don't set them up. Yeah, yeah. I I just don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So well, we'll see how good Mac Jones Mac Jones is, but I'm just not gonna jump on this train that he's like the he's gonna be the franchise saving quarterback that everyone thinks he have. And I'm looking at the history of Alabama quarterbacks in the first league. First of all, how you gonna have a franchise saving quarterback when the quarterback we lost has six seven Super Bowls. Yeah. And six with us. <laughs> like, just keep us afloat. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be an interesting season. I already said they, they might just win. They might win eight or nine games. That they're in the seven to nine win range for me with them because I'm looking at their schedule and then I keep forgetting they added one more game to the season. So, <sighs> yeah, we'll see. Uh, and other good news, our guy Jameis is back as yes. a starting quarterback. The Saints announced that a couple weeks. Was it, I think it was last week or the week before they announced that. He had a pretty good showing on a Monday night game, preseason game. But, I mean, yeah, you look at Jace, Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill. Like, give the real quarterback the shot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to say, man. I think they was doing a couple people some good favor. You know what I mean? Some favors in there. And, yeah, I, I think the favors must have ran out because yeah. this man should have been a starter. The, or at least give an opportunity to uh, stop. Yeah, because even last year when Drew Brees got hurt, they wanted to put Taysom Hill in there. They they gave him like three starts, and it was just like, dude, what are we doing here, man? Because we we know this dude's not an NFL quarterback. He's good for your gimmicks and stuff, but he's not a sustainable NFL quarterback. You got a former number one pick, and you want to have him on the sideline. And the majority of the time when Hill came in, you knew what was happening. Yeah, I, that's the only thing with gimmick like quarterbacks. Like as soon as they come in, you know what's going down. So it's like, yeah, 
Get, and, get James in there. Yeah, pretty much. And it's also good for him because he sat for a whole year. He got his eyes fixed. You know? you got oh, he got lazy. He had lazy. Oh, that's, yeah. oh, that makes sense. Yeah, before he got to the Saints, that that off season when he was a free agent, he get, he had LASIK surgery. So he didn't even have twenty twenty. He had that thirty thirty. Only for thirty thirty. Yeah, 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 <laughs> man. <laughs> but but now nah, he looked good. He look, he looked really good out there uh, in that preseason game I watched in that offense. He looked good. He was getting the, still got the arm strength, get the ball down the field, and that's what the Saints. That's what the Saints are built on, getting the ball down the field. They couldn't do that with Drew Brees. Oh, you just told me that man can finally <laughs> see. I think he's going to be hot now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see. They come up here. They come up. They, they play the pass, too, so that'll, that'll be interesting. This man was blind his whole career. <laughs> Ain't that something. Yeah. He may have had contacts, but, yeah. The, the yeah people thought his, he had issues with his brain. That. It was really his eyes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and some other NFL news, y'all. Yo, your boy with the mustache, Gardner Minshew. Oh yeah, he got tra- he got traded. Look at that stash. <laughs> got traded from the Jaguars to the Eagles. It's it was clear why the Jaguars traded him. Trevor Lawrence is there. Yeah, <laughs> Trevor Lawrence is like all world quarterback. This dude. Yeah, yeah, but Gardner ain't bad. He he's I feel he's not bad, bad for Gardner. Yeah. But he has an opportunity to actually get in that starting position for, with the Eagles because they have Joe Flacco on the roster. Yeah. And that I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, and I don't even I don't know if they like Jalen Hurts, cause I, the th- the way they've been doing all this, I, I don't know if they like him. <coughs> yeah, I don't think they do at all. <laughs> yeah. I feel like he should be given an opportunity to you know I mean show what he could do. I don't mind you bringing in God and Minshew. I don't know what relationships Joe Flacco has built over his career, <laughs> but he's built some solid ones. I need some of those relationships. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, so what happens when I you thought, win a Super Bowl? Yeah, like, he ain't in, like, a suit. <laughs> he's in uniform? He's yeah. active? Yeah. He, he's washed, too, but he keeps uh, – people keep offering him money to come to their That's team. what happens you're a good guy, man. He must be, be a great mentor. Well, yeah. Has to be. Uh, he, yeah, maybe. But yeah, but, yeah, this whole thing with the Eagles, too, because they're – I don't understand what they're doing because you got rid of Carson Wentz because you thought Jalen Hurts was going to be, you know, the guy come up. Then he he didn't even play all preseason. I don't know if he's hurt or not. He didn't play. And then you bring in Gardner Mitchell, who has, like, abilities to be a starting quarterback. So it's like, are you sure, are you sure of your quarterback? Because if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. I just think it was one of those, like, since, you know, Mitchell just kind of just got dropped just because of, the draft pick and who's coming in, they probably looked at it as a quick opportunity. Like, we don't know what Hurts is going to give us, so at least we know Minshew mm. is a solid quarterback that's that's a solid starter. So, yeah. you know, yeah. like, just it's a, a nice contingency plan, I guess. Yeah. Is that the word yeah. for it? C- contingency plan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it look, it, like, the way it's going, it might, it's, if Jalen Hurts is, the, is named the opening day starter, Stuff it looks like he might be on a short leash because once again, also new coaching staff as well too. And that's that unfortunate support. when you have a starter <laughs> behind you. Like, <laughs> like so, man. Jalen Hurts, man, better get in the lab, tighten up, and get he, to work. He just better play good enough for them not even to think about putting Gardner Minshew in at any point, and unless it's like be, injury or something. And that's gonna be tough because I don't see a second year guy, first year starter. Playing yeah. that well to keep a starter on the bench. And I don't even – and their roster, too. You're just looking at it like uh, – God is no bum. He, yeah, he's not. He'd be like, balling. Yeah, he'd be throwing. Especially with the Jags. Like, I, he was balling with them. So, yeah. imagine what he would do with a solid team. Yeah. Th- that's another problem with the Eagles. You know, their offense, you don't know. It's like, their offensive weapons and stuff, you're not sure how they're going to look this year. So, yeah, it's going to be – Interesting times in the AFC East, but, you know, that division is going to be trash anyway. And, all right, so the Bears, <laughs> you know the Bears haven't had, like, a franchise-changing quarterback ever in their history. You got, you got one who, got, <laughs> who has all the potential to be that franchise-changing quarterback, and now you want to name Andy Dalton as the starting quarterback for your team, and it's just like, you know what Andy Dalton is. You know what he's going to give. This dude has all the skills and all the tools to be a great NFL quarterback. Just throw him in the fire. (laughs) 
This man didn't even look like he wanted to play last year. I don't get it. You guys, these guys are great people, and they built some great relationships. Because and, and some of these people on the staffs and front office need to fire themselves. Yeah. I'm sorry, like this is ridiculous. Yeah, and you would also think the coaching staff over there in in Chicago, you guys are already you guys have already been getting criticism for drafting Trubisky and giving him all of these opportunities and, and stuff, and it didn't work out. And now you got a guy who's probably ten times better than any quarterback you've ever had since your tenure there, and you just want him to be on the bench to start off the season and run the scout team D offense. A do you not like job security or something, or do you have that much job security that you can do that? Did they not see him playing in preseason? He was balling. He Damn. proved that he could be a starter. Yeah. So I, I don't get it. I, I, I don't I don't want to, you know, say no race card or nothing, but I don't know who's in the Chicago front office and coaching staff that got an issue with a young, high-profile black quarterback coming from Ohio State. Who no one says a negative thing about him. Yeah, there's yeah. not even any like, Ugh. like pros and cons about his game. Like they say all positive things about him. So I don't understand why he's playing behind a guy who has proven that he can't bring a team to the promised land for yeah. over a decade. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and if they do, and if they don't put him in at any point this season, this will be the second time in Justin Fields' life that he's had to sit back and watch somebody he's head and shoulders better than play an entire season because University of Georgia, they had him right there. Could have won a national championship if they, if they started him right away his freshman year, but they wanted to start Jake Fromm. And they ended up losing in the national championship game at the, or the semifinals and stuff. And he ends up leaving to Ohio State. And what does he do? Just gets all these records and stuff. And, and the I University mean, of Georgia is like. I mean, Jake found that bad. He, they went to. They, they it was not as good as him. Nah, we know that. Oh, no. But you know how people mature once <laughs> like, you get yeah. around a different system. It might yeah, You might yeah. flourish a little more. So I'm just saying, like, it might be at that time, he might not have shown that he was ready uh, to take the spot from that dude. Oh, that's, no, no. that's all I'm saying. Oh, no, what they were saying. No, the, like the guys that cover college football, they, right, they were trying right. to figure out why he, they didn't choose him. Uh, yeah, because I didn't watch much Georgia that year either. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah, I didn't either, but from what I was reading and all the folks that cover college football and stuff, they were okay. just saying they did not understand why they chose Jake Fromm. And the crazy thing about this is it's not like, you know, Andy Dalton is like a second-year quarterback. Yeah. Third year. Like, this man's been around for over a decade. You know uh, what he's going to give you. Like, <laughs> And then, then it looked like he didn't even want to do anything last year. Like, didn't they call him off the couch last year? No, nah, he, was, he was a backup. He oh, was he was a, back a backup. He was, he was Dak's backup. All right. And then it just looked like he was just like, what am I here for? I'm ready to retire. And then he out here stealing yeah. money. Hey. I ain't mad at him getting his bread, but. Yeah, I need to know who his agent is. This, these things, and then, like you said, after having Mr. Trubisky, you would have thought you want a whole new face. People were excited to see. I'm not excited to see the Red Rocket. Oh, man, we might see, uh, Justin Fields might get in there in the first game, so we'll, <laughs> we'll see. All right, and <laughs> other NFL news, a quarterback that can't get out of his own way, Mr. Carson Wentz. Ooh. That's Ooh. your boy. Man. That's your boy. <laughs> he got the injured foot that he was set to return week one. Now he's put on the COVID-19 list, so he's going to be out. Like 10 days, I mean, yeah, 10 days or so. And now uh, your season opening day starting quarterback is in jeopardy. And it's just like, oh, Carson, man, you you know this is kind of like your last, <laughs> your last hurrah to try to be a starting quarterback because if this doesn't work out, you're going to end up just bouncing from team to team, being a backup or might not be in the league. So uh, He needs to start a movie called Born, Boy Born in the Bubble. <laughs> Like that movie about that boy born in the bubble. Oh uh, yeah, oh, man. <laughs> like for real, like he can't, he can't get right. But I've been saying this since I, this is, this is if, coming on the show. If like, there was a guy that need he need he needed to quarantine himself for like all the time, it's him because it's just like and that man. It's like somebody did like black magic on him or something, or he did. He did something bad in his life at one point that is just <laughs> coming back to bite him or something, like man. Glass. Right? Because it's like the man, the man can't catch a break or anything. It's like you, all right, all right, and then you're like, oh, you, anytime, anytime you hear news about him, it's never good. 
the I past think, two years, though. I think he caught his break when he just made it to the NFL. I think that, you know, some people just make it, and then that's just what it is. Like, because yeah. he can't buy he can't buy a healthy year. No, man. <laughs> he need a – yeah, he need to go see the witch doctor or something. I don't know, but – Jeez Louise, man. It's just stay on the field. And the thing about the Colts is they actually have a good team that can actually protect him. Like they have an offensive line that can protect them. They have a running game. But then like, they but who's their backup? Is I have no idea. So they got rid of what's his name for Brissett? Him? Jacoby yeah, Brissett, yeah, Brissett. Yeah, I, th- I think so. So it might be karma on the Colts head. So you never know nowadays. Yeah, def- def- definitely never know. Uh we all go to Craig. Craig is um <laughs> so it's funny. Craig did this and he's he's in uh, Disney World right now. He's down there in Florida right now, so he did this as he's walking around Disney World. So we'll go to Craig and then we'll come back. What up everybody? It's Craig coming to you live from Universal Studios for No Huddle here on After the Whistle. And I'm here to give you my picks for uh, each division. Uh, Let's start off real quick with the NFC West. Uh, I got the LA Rams taking it. Uh, they They got one of the strongest defenses in the NFL. And with Matt Stafford at QB, with that wide receiver core, it's gonna be easy pickings. Uh, the NFC South, I got Tampa Bay winning it again. You know, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Bucks. It's an easy pick for me. Uh, T- Tampa Tom, I love the man. I think he's going to help him take it. Uh, the NFC North, uh, with Rodgers returning and Devontae Adams getting his contract, Aaron Jones returning, A.J. Dillon is the backup running back. Uh, I think that they're going to take it again this year. Uh, Green Bay's just strong with Aaron Rodgers at the helm. Uh, when the N- NFC East... You know, it's kind of hard to choose between Washington and Dallas. Dak Prescott's back, but can he remain healthy? I don't really know. Uh, Washington with probably arguably the strongest defense in the league this year. Um, But their quarterback situation is looking pretty suspect. Uh, So if I had to go Dallas staying, I'm with Dak Prescott staying healthy all year long, I'm going to say Dallas takes it. Um, AFC West. Uh, Kansas City, of course, you got Patrick Mahomes. You got Travis Kelsey, you got Tyreek Hill, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Clyde Edwards- it's an easy pick for me, uh, so I'm going to go with Kansas City. Uh, then you have the AFC, the AFC South. Uh, I got Tennessee. A lot of people think because of Carson Wentz going to Indy that they might take it. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars got a rookie quarterback. I don't think that they're going to make it happen. Uh, and, and then the Tennessee Titans, I mean, excuse me, the Houston Texans, that's a joke. You know, even with Deshaun Watson, if he plays, they still ain't going to make it happen. They got a sloppy run game and no wide receivers other than Brandon Cooks. Uh, so, you know, I got to go with Tennessee, King Henry. A, uh, you got Julio Jones joining, A.J. Brown. Uh, you know, they got a strong tight end game. And, and Ryan, T- excuse me, yeah, Ryan Tannehill at the helm. It's looking real strong. I think they're going to make it happen. Um, then uh, we have the AFC, uh, the AFC East. And, of course, I want to say New England Patriots all day. I always want to say the New England Patriots. But if I'm going to be an honest person, I got to say more than likely we got to go with the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen's a beast. Uh, Stephon Diggs, top five wide receiver. Uh, they brought on Emmanuel Sanders. The run game is a little suspect. We don't know what's going to do. It's raining out here. It's raining out here and you were in the Universal Studios. Why is it raining? I don't understand. It don't make no sense. But I think that Buffalo's going to take it. I think the Patriots could make a run for a wild card play into the playoffs. But Buffalo's definitely going to take it this year. Uh, and then for the AFC North, uh, I want to say Baltimore because I love my man Lamar Jack. Birds flying low. Birds flying low, almost got attacked. Uh, I want to say my boy Lamar Jackson can get it done. But in all honesty, after Mark Andrews, I feel like their their wide receiver game suspect. Yeah, they brought on Sammy Watkins and Mark uh, Marcus Houston Hollywood. Uh, I mean, Mar- I'm Marcus Houston. <laughs> Marcus Brown, uh, a.k.a. Hollywood Brown. I don't really believe in that wide receiver core. Defense is okay but it could be better. Uh, Cleveland's got strong defense, strong offense. Baker Mayfield's coming into his own. Jarvis Landry is the king of of wide receivers on that team. Plus, they got the two-headed monster, Kareem Hunt, and the man, Nick Chubb. So I believe that this is the year that Cleveland Brown wins the division. Uh, Finally, um, oh, I didn't, yeah, I got, that's all of them. Let's talk about Cam Newton. 
Cam Newton gets replaced. He gets dropped. He gets kicked to the curb by the New England Patriots. Shocked to everybody. I'm going to be real shocked to everybody. I really thought this was going to be the year Cam Newton got his stuff together. But clearly he has not. Uh, not following COVID protocols. Uh, you know, obviously not playing up to par for Bill Belichick. And now they're going to put their faith in the, in the young boy, Mac Jones. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, with the wide receiver squad he has in the run game, I believe that, you know, it's a situation set up for him to, to succeed. So to not succeed means we made a very terrible decision at the quarterback, uh, drafted him in the first round. If he does succeed, Bill Belichick is a genius, and we all continue believing that for the rest of our lives. Uh, with that being said, that's all I got for you this week. Uh, see you next week. Back to After the Whistle. Have a good day. All right, and we are back. Let's talk some NBA news. Your boy, Ben Simmons. Who boy? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he likes skin, so, you know, he's he automatically. Yeah, we all do stick together when it's, when it's time to fight, but not when it's time to shoot. <laughs> yeah, so he's made it. He's told Philadelphia Brass that he wants out of Philadelphia. He's not going to report to training camp, which starts, like, pretty soon, training camp for them. And... And this is one of those things just like, you know, when you when a girl breaks up with you and <laughs> and you try to break up with her but realizing that she done already broke up with you. This is one of those things of him telling the sixes that he want to he want to yeah, he just try trying to he just trying to leave before he gets kicked out. The, I mean, he didn't he didn't do himself any favors, but yeah, he like went on a it was a whole thing happening with him. You know, he was talking about uh just not being happy in Philadelphia anymore and a whole lot of stuff. And it's just like, dude, yeah, your play kind of <laughs> you indicated. Yeah. You contributed to your own misery, my friend. Yeah. It's like, like certain things, you can't get mad if you go and, you know, go get a steak and cheese and they heckle you for not shooting. Yeah. Or brick and free throws are ridiculously like, and you have all the time in the world to get better in certain aspects of your game. You yeah. Know what I mean? It's yeah. not like you can't do these things. We've seen you do these things coming up, high school and all that. So, like, you showed and displayed that you can do it. You just choose to play a different way, and mm -hmm. your fans don't appreciate it. And you're playing one of the, one of the most critical states to play a sport in. That's Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. What do you expect? Yeah, and, and well, the, the, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just don't, I, I just don't understand the, like his thought process right now. Like, it's just, you're just looking at it. I mean, you refuse to shoot in a big, in the playoffs, in the fourth quarter, in a game seven. You refuse to even attempt the shot that they had to put you on the bench because you would refuse to shoot the ball. So now, gonna try to find. They, they need to find somebody, a team that will take this because he still got four years, 147 million dollars left on his contract. So. I was just you gotta find a team willing to take on that contract. It's it's gonna be difficult. Yeah, man. You know, I barely understand people we grew up with. Yeah. I ain't trying to understand him. Yeah. <laughs> and the craziest part is you have an all world player athlete right next to you that wants you to be great and knows if you two play at the level that potential that people see know. Or the potential, live up to the potential that expectations, I should say. I can't even get my words together. Live up to the expectations. Like, you guys would be unstoppable because nobody could stop and beat. And you, you could play defense and get to the cup and do whatever you want, but it's just. They're a playoff team every year. Yeah. It's not like he's playing with some bums. Yeah. yeah right. I don't. And you're 6'10, 6 Hey. Oh, maybe man. maybe he maybe he stopped shooting the ball because he didn't like being in Philly. So yeah. maybe the next team he goes to, he's gonna be we'll, we'll, shooting that thing. We'll see. Who we'll, knows, man? We'll see. Maybe maybe he need, he's one of those guys that needs a fresh start. But my goodness, man, this is this this whole thing is just getting from bad to worse, and it's like, well, can't got nobody to blame but yourself. Yeah, I find it comical. Yeah, very. All right. <laughs> The team that's going, the most entertaining team that's going into this upcoming NBA season is the Los Angeles Lakers, and they added another player to their already <laughs> veteran roster. They, added, they brought back Rajon Rondo on a one-year deal. 
They got two. They got two. Uh, two interesting. Two interesting point guards on their roster. So in two interesting. I was just say characteristics. I should say between Rondo and Westbrook. But, oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah. You know, once they got Rondo, I forgot about Westbrook. My bad, man. <laughs> Hey, they bringing back the champ. Yeah. Like, you know, it's just – and we've been, I've been saying they should never let him go. So, hey. you know, we're going to see what Westbrook brings. But we know what Rondo going to do. Man, this is going to this is gonna be one of the most entertaining team, no matter what the circumstances is, either if they're winning or losing. Because one thing we're guaranteed to get is entertainment from this group, this character. The good thing team. about Rondo, you can put Westbrook at the two. And people forget, at UCLA, Westbrook played the two. Yeah. He didn't primarily play the one because Collison was at the one, yep. I think. So yep. Yep. You're right. You're they right. forgot how how vicious that man was on the wing. Yeah. And think about it, him not having to handle the rock and playing everything, him just yeah. getting and going. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he don't – yeah, because <laughs> people, people definitely forget how exhausting or how much en- how energy consuming it is to have the ball in your hands that – that many times in a basketball game, you know, bringing it up, setting people up, then getting having to score yourself. You know, I deal with that with the kids when they think they're gonna they think I'm gonna be the next AI Westbrook or somebody, and I have them do dribbling drills for 20 minutes, and they yeah. dying looking at me like I'm crazy. Yeah, and I'm like, you wanna you wanna enjoy doing these dri- doing these things and understand these moves. It's the work you got put into doing. Yeah, you know what I mean. So. And that's, what that's, and that's the piggyback on what you're saying about people who have no clue how much energy it takes and mm-hmm. how much energy you exhaust playing at the guard position, especially mm-hmm. when, you prim- when you're the primary ball handler. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, let me read to you this, this Lakers roster right now. This is definitely an interesting cast of characters. Russell Westbrook, Rajon, Rajon Rondo, Kendrick Nunn, Malik Monk, Wesley Matthews, LeBron, Dwight Howard, Taylor Horton Tucker, Mark Gasol, Wayne Ellington still in the league. I did not know that. Anthony Davis, Devontae Kaycock, I think that's how you pronounce it, C-A-C-O-K. I ain't going nowhere near that. Yeah. <laughs> Kat Bazemore, Trevor Reza, Carmelo Anthony. He went to Illinois, Cousins. right? Uh, North Carolina, Wilmington. Oh, okay. Ron Rustin. Costas Antetokounmpo. That is, that is a very, very interesting group it of guys. sounds like a bunch of hoopers. It does. I'm talking about personality-wise oh, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. That's like... Definitely a fun group. Sounds like a fun group. It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be very entertaining. So we'll see <laughs> what happens. But yeah, one thing the Lakers are sure to be is entertaining this season. Yo, this fly right here will go away. All right. We got we got highlights for you, I believe. All right. Nah, before we go to the highlights, the story of the week, <laughs> Bishop Sycamore and the school that does not exist getting an ESPN game against IMG Academy. And I turned this game on in the second quarter, and it was 37 to nothing. And this story gets crazier and crazier. The coach, there's an active warrant out on the coach. I don't know if he's been arrested yet for fraud. Players that were 19, 20, 21 on the team. The school doesn't exist. I read an article. The play, one of the players, he was young, he was he was like yeah, he was a junior. He's young. They they never went to class. They never they never practiced. They were staying in hotels and stuff like that. Mad. This the whole thing is just mad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I shout out to IMG yeah. for whooping on them like yeah. that, just so they, they're exposed. Because yeah. you know nobody wants to you know get excited to watch some football on ESPN and have to watch this nonsense. Yeah. And um, I read I read an article. You know they had players that were already at other schools that were considered to be on their roster. This guy started another pro, another school somewhere else. Yeah, I guess connected to that. Then he don't pay no bills. He don't pay hotel bills. He just he just piles words on top of words on top of words on top of words. Oh my gosh! Like, yeah, yeah. I sent you the article. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, the, the article I read, the kid that the one of the kids that was uh, that that was dealing with that, he told me that they had to rob Walmart, Craigers, and you know some of these kids just to eat. Uh, he said the way they met him, he came he came to one of the camps and he was like handing out brochures and just telling him about the school and stuff like that, like selling them dreams and stuff. And it was like, nah, this man he, he probably on the run because like legit everything that he like paid for, like helmet stuff, hotel, is a lawsuit for everything. Oh, yeah. he, cause he just pocketed everything. Yeah, it. The crazy thing is, I think 
kind of had to be skeptical just by the name alone, Bishop Sycamore. Like, I, you should have had a little eyebrow raising. I'm, but, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, bro. When I went to camp, there were some kids that were going to, like, Skidmore College. Skid. <laughs> you know, us growing up, we had, we had Skid anything. We think it's Skid Mocks. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Yeah. I can't even knock the day. <laughs> um, <laughs> now watching the game, it was like the helmets. They had no like stickers on it. The uniforms had no names. Had didn't even have the school name on oh. it. Yeah, the uniforms didn't have the school name on it. He, Nothing. He wasn't trying to have another lawsuit. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, so it was. So and then the announcers were just like they couldn't even. The announcers couldn't even call the game right because they just. Ain't know what to do with the school or anything about the school. So it was just all bad. And is man, the folks for ESPN that were put that put this thing on national television, they got some issues too. Or the firm yeah, that they dealt yeah. with. It's like a private firm yeah. that ESPN goes through. But ESPN, why don't you just have your own little section in your mm -hmm. um, studio that deals with that now? Yeah. You can't be going through. Yeah. Keep me going through third parties, man. Yeah, that's Especially right. <laughs> making, your, making your network look yeah, bad. Yeah, making your company look bad and stuff <laughs> like that. Making your making your announcers look bad like they're not good at their job. And it's just like, oh. And why don't people at ESPN give people those jobs? I mean, you want to pay me six, seven figures. I'll take it. You know, yeah. wink, wink. But, like, yeah, you shouldn't be going through third parties. And how, how's that, how did third party even create a company oh, like that? Bro, that's I don't, dope. I don't know. Man, I don't know, but yeah, this whole story is is wild. And what's also sad is with the the kid that he spoke with Complex Sports, he said his whole junior year got taken away from him. When he went back to normal school, he had to repeat his junior year, and he had to do it just in time so he could play his senior year. And then there was other guys that their whole in college? No, this high school. Oh, oh yeah. he was oh, he was oh, a, I'm sorry, he was a he was a junior in high school. Okay, okay. He was a junior in high school. And then he was saying there was other guys who were seniors, they had their whole senior year taken away from them and it was like, Yeah, this is But in all reality you still should have your eligibility since this isn't even an official school. <laughs> I would fight that. I would you, fight you that. You would think, but yeah. Yeah, that was what a craziest story. If you haven't if you haven't read up on this story, please check it out because this is also, too, parents, be more involved in where your kids are going. Like, yeah. there's no reason why this many kids should be in no man's land. <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah. Like, no. come on. What are y'all doing? Facts, facts, facts. <laughs> this is facts. <laughs> all right. Let's go to – all right, high school football season starts next Friday across the state. So this past Saturday, there was a lot of scrimmages happening. I was seeing – Lynn Classical had a scrimmage over the weekend. Lynn English had a scrimmage over the weekend. Me, I was at Manning Field. St. Mary's and Medway were scrimmaging, and I was there. So check out these highlights. We are going to go around the sports world really quickly before we get up out of here. All right. Packers, Saints, 
season opener moved to Jacksonville because of what's happening in New Orleans. You know, uh, shout out to everybody in New Orleans. Stay safe. And, For real. Yeah, it's crazy. Everybody in Louisiana. Yeah. It was, it's all over Louisiana. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah Louisiana. Yeah, definitely, definitely. That. They can't catch a break. <laughs> uh, college football. It started last week, but all the top teams play this weekend. Boston College season opener Saturday against Colgate. Ohio State, Minnesota Thursday. Alabama versus Miami Saturday. Clemson versus Georgia. Those top five teams on Saturday as well. That's the primetime game. College basketball. Imani Bates. He committed to the University of Memphis. I think they got another guy, too, who's a top who's a top recruit, too. Playing the same um, EYBL team as yeah. Bates. I just, his name just... Yeah, it I starts with a J, it. I just remember. Yeah, he nice, though. Yeah, Penny. Penny doing them things. You coaches better not be hating on him. Try to do another scandal on him. Cause you know, <laughs> <out> there, <man. laughs> uh, high school. Uh, shout out to Joshua St. Jean. He's headed to the Darrow School. Darrow da School. Uh, I think that's I think how it's Darrow. Yeah, Darrow School. He's at, he's heading over there. York. Yeah, so uh, best of best of luck to him over there. Mm-hmm. Good work. Red Sox. Uh, the weather. The Red Sox. I'm telling you. Yeah, man. That's how we they scale. lose. They had to put. Zan- <laughs> they had to pull Xander Bogarts from the game because he. He he was positive. He tested positive. He had a positive COVID case, so oh. they had to pull him from the. It's a it's a hot mess happening over there. So, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. All right, top ten. We coming back. We are gonna get out of here. back all right we've come to an end of our program you know we're back next week we're gonna have our nfl show stevie patrick jr is gonna come in here guest host we're gonna try not to get canceled because these two when they get together he just i don't don't, don't know what they're gonna say so (laughs) so we'll we'll see you guys next next week on that uh happy birthday to my cousin today's her birthday so shout out to her happy birthday to her friday's my mom's birthday shout out to my mama gonna have a cake and party and all that she's gonna try to extort me too some drinks yeah (laughs) some drinks Yo, we got to get out of here, man. Everybody, be, be safe. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. I can't hear all the other stuff. <laughs>